NSA helped Microsoft make Vista secure. Aren't you assured on that? U.S. asked internet firms to save data could help fight child porn. Google, Microsoft, AOL, Comcast, Verizon, and others Friday in a private meeting with the Justice Department. So there you go. Three years of everything that you do on the internet right down into the supercomputers in the NSA. NSA has massive database of Americans' phone calls. Verizon, Bell South, QuEST. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. Well, this is why I really need to have these guys get me the right projector. But uh, this, you know, the main thing is that you get the drift, the drift of this, and of course, all the in-depth information about these events are still on the internet. Telecoms let NSA spy on calls, and then. When individuals sue these people, which has happened since then, because this article here is February 6, 2006, when American people say, hey, you know, you had no reason to listen to my phone calls. I'm suing you. The George Bush people say, we're going to give them immunity. Just totally sidestep the Fourth Amendment and sidestep the Constitution. Patriot Act. What's well, the Patriot Act? That makes it okay. You know. This is the really scary thing about where we're headed. Web users walk Great Firewall of China. And what happened was is, I'm going to have to kind of read it here as well, Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, which have been pressured to help China's internet snoops restrict access to certain content and finger those trying to evade restrictions. Watching on closed-circuit TV screens are linked to the nearby police station. Looking over the shoulders of everyone, they were talking about a cyber cafe that people are in. The data collected through the use of software are instrument, inst instantly transferred to the police. This is 1984 high-tech. And you know something? These American companies, they just wanted the money. They went to China and said, yeah, you want to spy on the people, you want to lock them out? Give us the money and we'll show you how to do it. All these, you know, you're, you're right down the road from Silicon Valley here. And you know what's interesting? I went on the back streets of Silicon Valley the other day and a lot of these companies are empty. And you know, there is karma. I think everybody here understands karma. The amazing thing, though, is that, you know, countries have karma as well. And when Russell Means was here yesterday, you know, you think back on what the United States military did to rounding his people up in concentration camps. They gave them blankets with smallpox. Up in one of the areas where I, I have a home up there in Idaho, they put the Shoshone and Bannock, who hated one another, they were long-term warring tribes, they put them on the same reservation, hoping that they'd kill each other off. We genocided the South American people, the Vietnam people. We're working on uh, Iraqi people. So karma is a big deal. And America, you know, may think it's going to go rolling on 200, 300 years, but you know something? Ain't going to happen. You can't go around genociding other human beings and expect that your life is going to be fine. It's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, I'm going to jump over to electronic harassment, and this is where people take electronic weapons. Let me just read the definition. Electronic harassment happens if somebody uses any electronic device to aid themselves in invading your person or your property for the purpose of gathering information illegally or for the person, uh, purpose of causing harm. This is electronic harassment. This is the electronic harassment pages on my website, which you can go visit. It's, uh, uh, once again, it's uh, bugsweeps.com, info electronic harassment, and there's a little box on the front page. One of the items that's on the front page, on the right, there is a modified microwave oven. So people say, well, you know, how can people get a hold of these energy weapons? 
you know, the government has all the energy weapons. Nobody has energy weapons. Well, guess what? If you have a 1,200-watt microwave oven in your home and you peel the side of the oven open, which I had a case where these people did that. They were got in a conflict with their neighbors. And what they did is they peeled the microwave open on the side, and then they went, and this is a diagram that you can see on the Internet, and they faced this weapon through the walls. And microwaves go right through the walls like they weren't there. So they radiated the next apartment and the next two apartments down. Each apartment, the people were getting sicker and sicker. And after I did this story, I talked about it on Coast to Coast, I had these people call me up and say, well, can you send me the plans? <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. you know, and it fries you, what it does. And, you know, and uh, First of all, my, let me just say something about microwave. Isn't it a little odd they say, don't even operate the microwave, or, or don't even stand near close to the microwave when it's operating because it's unhealthy. Well, here you got this. Uh, Klystron tube that's in it, and what it does is it puts 2.4 gigahertz into the food and it vibrates the molecules at this frequency. And so once the food comes out, it's secondary emission. The heat coming off the food is 2.4 gigahertz. And then you take this food and you throw it down your throat into your digestive tract. Number two cause of death in America, first is heart attack. What's the second one? Digestive tract cancer. 1980, when I did the research, and there's a doctor called Dr. Herzl that did the original research on it. Uh, the, uh, it was out of Sweden, because that's where the original microwaves came from. And he did the research, and he found it, it, was, it was terrible for rats. I mean, it was horrible for everything. The original microwave company was thinking he'd come up with a great report. He says, look at this. It's killing my rats. And they said, oh, well, thank you for the report. That's all we need. We'll take the report now. But he ended up releasing the report, and they put him in prison. The report's still around. And so what happens is microwave vibrates molecules in a whole different way than human beings have been eating food for the billions of years we've heated over a fire. It's a whole different dynamic. And when I read all the information myself back in 1980, I lifted my microwave up and threw it in the dumpster. And uh, <clears throat> I had to, and now I have to go to these uh, places like Denny's if I'm on the road. I said, well, do you microwave the food? And they'll say, oh, yeah. Well, I said, well, I don't want my food microwaved. You don't? Vegetables. Normally it's the vegetables, not the mains, not the meat mains. It's the vegetables. So ask if you go to a restaurant whether they're microwaving your food and don't eat it. It's radiation, basically radiation. Jumping over to radiation, uh, on the, my website, once again, here is a picture of active denial. This is the military's microwave weapon. And what it does is it fries people. It's a 95 gigahertz, 1 million watt thing on a truck, and you, you just go, go and you, you aim it at people and you burn them. And it, it, there's a video also, there's a demonstration video on YouTube. If you, if you put an act of denial, you will see the video. And uh, the video will uh, give you, they, they actually showed the machine and they had a report that was brave, brave enough to stand out there. And he got radiated and had to hit the ground in about two seconds because they were toasting them. Now, here's the other problem, microwave towers. Okay, here's the little part of my website where you click on this tower and it will show you how they're concealing microwave towers these days. That is this document. They've got them in church steeples, flagpoles, utility poles, flagpole, uh, 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 a Christian cross for a, uh, a uh, church. Uh, they've got them in phony, phony buildings. They've got them in, um, let me pull up. They've got them in uh, uh, different kinds of chimneys, uh, different kinds of enclosures. Here's a water tower. Here's a clock. So, uh, trees as well. Yeah, they, the phony trees. So anyway, here, here's what you've got. A microwave tower can have up to three separate transmitting systems. Here's a picture of a typical tower. This one only has one level, but when you get into the city here, you'll see three levels. Now, here's an interesting thing. They have synthesizers. There are channels that these things operate under. And they operate in clusters like this. We have this three cluster right here. This is a small three-section microwave system. But 
Guess how many channels each tower can synthesize? You're going to love this. 666 channels. That's one tower level. And some of these have three or four because there's an AT&T and there's all that. So what they further look like, you start expanding it out, you start to get a matrix. This is the matrix. And what this is about is not just about communication. This is about what's going to happen when they decide to take over the streets of America. If there's a Rodney King event or some kind of event where they want to bring the people to their knees, they will take the synthesizers in here and they will start, they will turn off the cell and they will synthesize the kind of waveforms that we were hit with here yesterday. And all of a sudden you're going to be sick you're going to feel terrible, you're going to have headaches, you won't be able to think straight, and that is what we're up against. Depends on how much power that they, they turn it up. But it's not a matter of range anymore because you see with a matrix like this, they're never more than a mile or two from the next one. So you can saturate a large area. Let me show you the next. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the one that shows the 666 channels, each one has the ability to generate on a synthesized basis. Here's another diagram that shows, it almost looks like a beehive, but you're, you're living in there and you know, I have people where I, where I go to where they're located and these hidden, you know, they, they, don't, they don't understand why they're sick and then we turn on this machine that I've got and we see that they are, there's a tower sitting right within 100 feet sometimes and they're being just fried slowly. They always feel worse during rush hour. You know, people will be 5 o'clock in the morning and 9 o'clock in the morning when the tower power comes up, the more people that are on the tower on the phone requests, more power from the tower. You've got uplink and downlink and control channel for every call. So if, you have a, if you're near a freeway where people are calling, and I've had several people that got very sick, and they would get sick five in the morning, they wake up five in the morning, their heart was racing, and uh, by nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, uh, you know, they would peak with feeling bad, 10 o'clock, they feel better, they're okay 10 in the afternoon to about four in the afternoon when the cell traffic comes back up, everybody jumps in their cars and gets on the cell phone. So when you really expand it out, that's what it looks like. You're covering probably 10 square miles. And there you are. The mind control system is in place. They just need to throw the switches. Just like the NSA. You know, when the NSA put the CLIA bill through, the, uh, the, law, the law, law that required everybody's phone to be pre-wiretapped in America, which was years ago, they added on your phone bill so that they, your phone goes to the NSA or to FBI. All they have to do is sit at their computer and, and punch in on the keyboard your phone number and bang, all your calls go into the hard drive. This is going to be very similar. They just say, these sectors of the city are causing problems, let's let them have it. But it's gotten more refined than that. I have information that now, with a sample of your DNA, they can direct specific waves to specific people. So if you're a dissident in a particular area, they'll say, well, where is this person? Check his cell phone. Towers will ping the cell phone, oh, he's over here. Okay, I'm gonna sit at my uh, control unit here and I'm gonna, we've got his DNA, let's, uh, let's give him a head cold for the next couple of days. Let's give him a virus. Let's take him out. He's gonna be a problem for the next couple of days. Let's just broadcast an energy waveform that will have a bio effect such that that individual, even though other people are being radiated with the same thing, there's a bioresonance to every individual, just like our fingerprint. Every person has an individual DNA, a different bioresonance. And so uh, the Stockland, the original Stockland patent is on my website where Stockland was able to go voice to skull with pulse tra uh, transmissions in 92. And then after the, the rest of the development went black ops. We don't really know what happened after that. We knew we could put voices in into, uh, to uh, group people's heads. What they did, and I know from the Russian trans translation, 
from Cheryl Welch, from reading all her translated psychotronic stuff from Russia, that they figured out how to biocode these microwaves so that it can attack specific individuals. Or you can do races. Let's say you go to Arabia. You want to just radiate and send these negative energies to Arabic people? You code it so that the Arabic DNA is the only recipient of, the, of this negative stuff and that all the Caucasian people don't get it. It's pretty far out. <laughs>